I normally don't do this. I normally don't touch on the same topic in the same day, but I just could not help myself. I could not pass up this golden opportunity to once again completely demolish the dump known as the WNBA. I should send this league a thank you card, or maybe I can buy them a nice decorative piece for their dump. Perhaps I'll give the ladies of the WNBA a nice decorative pull float so they have the opportunity to save themselves from this sinking ship. I need a good idea. I really do. I need a good idea to show my appreciation for the WNBA. They have taken the role from Deadspin as the dump that provides me with an endless supply of content. You know, I would be absolutely embarrassed if I were associated in any way with the WNBA. This league is an absolute failure, and they continue to humiliate themselves with the behavior of their players. It's one thing to insert yourself into a political conversation or political issues, and you have no idea what you're talking about. It's one thing to do that. Everyone has the right to voice their opinion. Whether I agree or disagree with it, it doesn't matter. It's your opinion. It's your right. If you want to be a woke dumbass, that's okay. That's okay. If you want to waste your money attending woke you tithing at Woke United Methodist, go for it. The rest of us are going to make fun of you. Your unbathed ass won't be allowed in the community pool, but you're allowed to be a woke shitfuck. That's your right. But what I don't like, and generally when this happens, it's always a fake wounded woker that's doing it taking to social media with their fake outrage, their fake cries for sympathy. What I don't like is when the shit fucks take a tragedy. They take a situation where parents have lost the lives of their children and these sick, demented people use this tragic situation to further their own twisted agenda. We talked about it this morning with Steve Kerr and now, the participants who identify as women in the WNBA, they are joining the woke circle jerk. First, let me start off by addressing this purely from a business perspective. Just for one second, humor me here. Let's pretend that we are Kathy Engelberg. We are the commissioner of the WNBA. Now, I know if most of us were the commissioner of the WNBA, we would immediately shut the fucking thing down. But let's just pretend for a moment that we actually care about the league and its players. The league is struggling. The dump is on fire and the firemen on site to put out the fire, they are laughing at the destruction and using the flames to light their cigars. Even with all of the free media promotion, you cannot get people to watch the world's worst basketball. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, quick ratings update. There were two more nationally televised WNBA games over the weekend. Both games were broadcast in the mid-afternoon time slot on ABC, one Saturday, the other Sunday. Once again, once again, ABC managed to report the ratings for everything else broadcast this weekend. For some reason, though, ratings for both WNBA games, they were lost in the mail. I'm telling you, that fucking post office, they have a vendetta against the WNBA. They keep losing their attendance reports. They keep misplacing the television ratings on broadcast TV. I just know there were at least 10 people who were asleep on their couch last weekend with the WNBA on in the background. Are those 10 people not important enough to record their ratings? Like I said, social justice warriors always have to have someone to blame. In this case, we're going to blame the post office. It's not that the WNBA can't draw an audience. The post office just refuses to report the numbers to the media. That's what it is. Anyway, back to our pretending. The WNBA, they're a league full of pretenders, so let's pretend right along with them. We are Kathy Engelbert. We're driving around in a Dodge Dart with the WNBA in the back seat, preparing to drive right off the cliff. No one is watching us. No one is talking about us on social media. The only allies that we have are in the mainstream media. Now, with that being the case, do you think it would be a good idea to have a media blackout? To refuse to speak with the mainstream media, your only friend? Is that a good idea? This fucking league can't draw an audience with the people talking about them, with the media talking about them. Now the Washington woke 
led by the ultimate shit fuck, Natasha, my mind's in the clouds, they are imposing a media blackout because of what happened in Texas yesterday. Oh, the ultimate virtue signal. But KC, this is a brilliant idea. This will bring attention and awareness to the WNBA. Uh, no the fuck it won't. This will do the exact opposite. It will cause more people to not want to watch this sewage. Did business improve for the WNBA when players were kneeling for the national anthem? Did ratings go up when they put themselves in the forefront of the abortion issue? What about gender pay equity? Did more people watch the WNBA because they felt sorry for these women because they weren't paid the same as the dudes in the NBA? Did any of that work? No, 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 and no. It didn't work then. It's not going to work now. You know how many mainstream media outlets have picked up on this story? This happened just last night. I'm about to play the soundbite of it for you. You know how many mainstream media outlets have picked up this story? Two. Dose. Yahoo Sports, Woke Illustrated. If Natasha Cloud, if she was going to be the leading voice in this mythical fight for gun control... She could at least be original. Check out this tweet from earlier this afternoon. I am sick and tired. Um, isn't that the same thing Steve Kerr said yesterday afternoon? Could you at least have a mind of your own? Natasha Cloud says, I am tired of thoughts and prayers. Well, you know what? I am too. For two years, I have been praying the WNBA would go out of business and it hadn't happened yet. Doesn't appear to be happening anytime soon either since a bunch of woke corporations decided to give the league a free $75 million for nothing. She mentions being tired of representation twice. Clearly, Natasha Cloud enrolled in Delusion 101 at Woke U taught by none other than Rex Chapman, who lives in the delusion that he has a successful media career. You know what, Natasha Cloud? I'm tired of representation too. I'm tired of the representation that you elected. I'm tired of representation turning a blind eye, not to mythical hatred and mythical racism. I'm tired of them turning a blind eye to real issues, rising gas prices, inflation, shortages, and baby formula. Now, I know baby formula doesn't affect WNBA players. Contrary to the belief of the dumb fucks, it is not physically possible for two people who identify as women to have a baby. Last night, after their, after their incredibly boring game against the Atlanta Dreamers, fitting team name though, fitting team name, since these women in the WNBA are living in a dream, it must be nice to make six figures through woke welfare and contribute nothing. There was an exciting 100 points scored in the game between the Dreamers and the Woke. 100 points. 100 points in what the media likes to call a professional basketball game. The media calls it professional basketball. The rest of us call it charity. 100 points. I've seen more points in a wheelchair basketball game. Anyway, after the charity event last night, disguised as a basketball game, Natasha Cloud attended the media scrum as the representation for the Washington Woke. Now, I'm going to try and play a portion of the soundbite for you. I had to use some creative tricks to download this video. It's not exactly, you know, circulating the internet. I know that's shocking. If this video is removed, you know I was forced to take it down. So, I will briefly summarize some of it after it plays. But check it out for yourself. Roll the film. Thank y'all for waiting. I'm so sorry. Um, I was in there showering, but uh, today we're going to do a media blackout. Um, I think that you are all aware of what is happening, what happened in Texas, uh, what happened in Buffalo, uh, not even a week and a half ago. Uh, we have an issue in this country, um, not only white supremacy, um, we also have a gun violence issue. Uh, and this is our, this is us using our platform, right? This game doesn't matter. So I'm calling on everyone, please, Put this out, post it, write to your not only local representatives, but your federal representatives and tell them you are tired. Tell them that we are tired of lives being lost in this country for sensible, senseless shit. It is time to implement gun laws and stop caring about profit and money over people and lives. You see crazy shit online, please send it to someone, send it to the police, send it to, to anybody. First, Natasha Cloud 
starts this press conference by claiming she was late because she was showering. Longtime followers of my channel, you guys already know, that is simply not true. Social justice warriors only shower on Wednesday. My inside sources tell me Natasha Cloud was late because her Magic Woke 8 ball kept getting stuck. She had to call the team technician into the locker room to fix it for her, so she knew which woke boner word to use in the press conference. Now you saw in the clip, the boner word, the Magic Woke 8 ball recommended, it was Old Faithful, the magic R word, mythical racism. She starts off a WNBA press conference about a school shooting that had absolutely nothing to do with race. And Natasha Cloud starts off talking about mythical white supremacy. She then pulled back the curtain a little bit. She said the WNBA game that she had just played in doesn't matter. Finally, finally, some truth. This is a record-breaking week for social justice warriors when it comes to the truth. Just Monday, we had Stephen A. Smith speaking truth on mythical racism. Now we have Natasha Cloud admitting what we have been saying for the last 18 months here on the channel. The WNBA doesn't matter. Then she calls on the government to solve the problem, which is always the recommendation of a woke dumbass, more government. Have you seen our president? The same guy you're calling on to solve the problem. Have you seen our president? The same guy two weeks ago trying to shake the hand of a ghost? You want that guy to step in to solve the problem? But then Natasha Cloud said something interesting. Hypocrisy, line one. Hypocrisy, line one. Natasha Cloud said, if you see crazy shit online, if you see crazy shit happening, don't be afraid to call the police. Call the police? Call the police? The same fucking police you've spent the last two years wanting to defund? The same police you've spent the last two years claiming are white supremacists? The same police Natasha Cloud protested against in Washington, D.C. You want us to call those guys? You know who was running into that school yesterday to save the lives of those children? You know who heard gunshots and ran into the building, not away from the building? It wasn't some pussy social justice warrior. The woke see a gun, they think it goes in their ass. It wasn't Natasha Cloud running into that building. It was the police. The same police you want defunded. Fuck you, Natasha Cloud, you hypocritical fuck. Ladies in the WNBA, they have been whining and complaining about equal pay. Chartered flights. To hell with giving these women more money. Give it to the damn police. That $185,000 Natasha Cloud will make this season to be completely useless? Give that money to those cops in Texas yesterday. Now look, I'm not going to go into the same spiel that I went into this morning about this not really being about gun control. But the thing is, the audacity of Natasha Cloud, the audacity of this woman is absolutely unbelievable. Not only because she's using a tragedy to push a twisted political agenda. This is something Natasha Cloud might not understand, but number one, stricter gun laws wouldn't have stopped what happened yesterday. Number two, you know why some people are so resistant to changes in gun laws? Because if you start giving an inch they want to take a mile. Once you give up a tiny fraction of personal freedom, you never get it back. Do we need background checks on gun purchases? Yeah, yeah, we do. Will it stop criminals from getting guns? No. The reason so many people are hesitant about background checks, it has nothing to do with the background checks themselves. If they submit on that issue, what does the anti-gun movement, what does the woke dumbasses ask for next? Remember yesterday, we were talking about the transgender movement and how did we get to this point? We talked about how the changes started small, then social justice warriors pushed for more and more and more. Then the next thing you know, you got some non-binary shit fuck teaching your seven-year-old how to properly insert the batteries into the cucumber. Remember that? It's the same idea, the same concept with the Second Amendment. 
If you want to live in a free society, it comes with inherent risk. There is no such thing as safety. The responsibility falls on you to keep yourself safe. If you want to live in a society where the responsibility of safety falls on the government to keep you safe, go live in China. You'll be plenty safe over there living in your 500 square foot apartment on a mandatory Kobe lockdown. But let me know what you think. Natasha Cloud, the WNBA, joining the woke circle jerk and using this tragedy to push a political agenda. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.